We will be going live in five, four, three, two, one. We're good, live. Good morning, Owasso. This is the Twins with Owasso Live, and this is the Morning Loop. It is currently 8 a.m. like normal. It is 47 degrees outside. It is cloudy. Looks like it could start raining any second, but it doesn't say it's supposed to rain today. We just, I would maybe expect scattered showers or drizzle, but it's mainly going to be windy today. So very windy, and it's supposed to be pseudo chilly. It's going to, like I said, again, get up to 62, but I don't know if it's going to feel like a warm 62 with this wind blowing, so... Keep that in mind, light jacket weather, maybe something waterproof. That way, in case it does, the sky does open up, you might start to uh, have that jacket to put on. So, that being said, traffic conditions are slow right now. It is congested up there by the 76th Street on-ramp the way it normally is. Uh, but, I mean, it's slow up here past the YMCA as well. So, if you are concerned about your commute, you might try to divert, go 75 or... Do that little sub road that takes you up into the, the, the airport. The airport Bingo. way, yeah, over there by all the. What what do you call that stuff? That's it's like all the that pecan orchard area over there. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, well that's Mingo Road. It, yeah. It's it's Mingo. So over there by the zoo, just the other way to yeah. the zoo and the zoo. airport. Yeah. So, uh, you might consider rerouting if you are concerned about not getting to work on time right now. Now with that being said, what do we got as far as upcoming events in the Owasso area? I don't imagine the schedule and calendar has changed all that much and it was going to be a slow it's kind of a slow month oh uh well nothing really let me pull up the stuff over onto the big screen over here we'll start with uh owasoisms because i don't think they've changed at all it's just that sensory skate event mm -hmm. at wheels and thrills wheels and thrills. And again that is at 10 30 a.m to 12 30 p.m on Hundred, I said one zero six three seven North Garnett Road. North Garnett. So, over there, heading towards German Corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then we have on the chamber side of events, we have <gasps> today. Yesterday was the post quarter, the quarterly event postcard, and today is new member orientation for uh, chamber members and mm -hmm. the twenty twenty four April Workforce Owasso. Okay. And then, Good of course, deal. Wednesday will be their monthly meeting, like their monthly meeting this upcoming month, which will be at the Tulsa Tech, mm -hmm. as always. Around it'll be at twelve, and that's really all there is uh, event-wise because we're kind of skipping sports today because we're going right into global news because we missed a couple of things yesterday that because you know we kind of ignore the news on the weekends, mm -hmm. just try to focus on family and. Yeah work and things we need to get caught up on throughout the week yeah so i'll leave it over to you then all right so we'll kind of push on the national news so yesterday we kind of had a theme it was lgbtq themed yesterday and i guess we're it looks like we might be pseudo sticking with that again today again it just seems like all this stuff is just being thrown in our face in the media and every aspect of life so again like i said yesterday the gay dinosaurs you know like, hey what does the t and t-rex stand for ridiculous so yesterday one thing we didn't mention because i wasn't really aware of the extent of it i thought it was just like kind of a misspeak thing but again i but i mean i guess biden thought it was a misspeak too so biden declared easter was tr national trans day of visibility now, you'd think that this would be like a isolated thing, but I guess it's not. I guess maybe this has been something in the works for a while because uh, they did it in the U.K. as well. Made Easter trans, uh, national tray of trans visibility. So, I don't know how else to put it, but I mean, does it not seem like they're attempting to spit in the face of Christians at this point? You know, I, I imagine the, the, the argument from the trans community would be, well, Christians are the ones who persecute us the most. I'm like, you have to be living under a rock if you think that's the case. Go live in an Islamic country and see how well anybody who comes out as trans, gay, or... Uh, let's see let's see what happens when, uh, they, when they decide to take you skydiving without a parachute. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. You know, like, I would say in the last hundred years, Christians have been way too tolerant 
Like, you know, Christian, the Christianity's not going to die because we have a, a fledging, fledging numbers. We're going to die because we're too tolerant. Again, this is why being nice isn't a good thing. Being nice just means you're easy to walk over. You know, that's why uh, they said the meek shall inherit the earth. You know, the meek sounds like, oh, they're weak. They're they're not strong. No, meek is someone who has a sword but keeps it sheathed. Doesn't pull it unless absolutely necessary. So don't we've allowed a we've allowed a lot of leeway, and there's a lot of again, this is why borderline Catholics might be a and again, I guess the Pope's kind of fallen off too, but you have all these people kind of saying that, oh, no, God will uh, God will love you if you're gay. But he doesn't love the sin you're committing for being gay. Mm -hmm. You can be homosexual, but you can't act out on that. You can't act out on the sin of the flesh. But, again, National Tra Day of Trans Awareness, they replaced Easter with it. You know, they're all going to say, oh, you can still celebrate Easter and whatnot, but the fact that they made a public spiel about it, and again, Biden didn't know that the, uh, Biden didn't even know he did it. He gave a speech about it, the White House put out some stuff, and when pressed on it, he was like, I didn't do that. I mean, this goes to show you how coherent our... Our president currently is. So, it's just kind of sad, you know. It's not good for the country. It's not good for our Christian nation. You know, and a lot of people have throw up a, a funk. But, you know, it's like we, we should value the fact that we're a Christian nation. We are founded on Christian ideals. It's the foundation, the building block of our society. So, ah, yeah. It's just kind of silly, and a lot of people will view this and anything I'm saying as just being hurtful. It's No, it's not being hurtful. It's just, I would say, why don't you think that's hurtful to Christians? And it's like, oh, because they're mostly white and they're all in power. It's like, don't you think that's kind of an awful thing to say? It's not a good argument either. Imagine going to another country and being like, by the way, uh, we don't like the way you do things, so we're going to force you to change it and adopt our di ideology. I can't stand it, man. It's it's crazy. And again, th again, I, I say, they say, we're not hurting anybody. We're not throwing this stuff in your face. Why are you concerned about it? Well, I'm concerned about it because, again, it's being thrown in our face left and right. And now even the White House is making it an official holiday that corresponds with Easter. So. Hold on. Say again. Oh, nice. So we're just talking. Yeah, just talking. Okay, for the, we're just podcast today. So uh, that's just it's that's what's so crazy about it. It's I just I cannot believe that people see it as oh you guys are just getting butt hurt. You've been in power. Your time is over. It's like what are you talking about? All we want is morality to win. We don't want degenerates walking around. And again, the dr how drag shows have been a thing for ages. Ages. I mean, that song Lola was wrote back in the 60s, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. it a song about a transvestite. So, to act like they haven't been around and like they've been like... If they were persecuted that badly, they wouldn't exist. It'd be like it would be in the Islamic countries where, you know, they... Hang them from flagpoles. Where they throw them off buildings. Like what Chad said. Go skydiving without a parachute. That's what they do. And if you think America is intolerant of them, like what it's amazing that you're all still alive. You know? I they just put forth the, the worst arguments that I've ever heard for America being a hurtful place. Christians are very tolerant. It's one of the few, it's the only sanctioned religion that Hollywood's allowed to make fun of. They don't make fun of Islam. They don't make fun of Buddhists or Hindus. All the other religions are, are deified. 
They're treated with a modicum of respect that Christianity, Christ, Christians are not treated with. Portrayed very, very sympathetically, or you know, everyone's very respectful mm-hmm. to their religion. Like I said, they even talked about this. I remember somebody talking about this with the, the Viking show, how they persecute Christians. Oh yeah, they, he, they meet in yeah. Meet one in, of the, the Viking, who's the most anti-Christian, the most anti-religious. You know, he doesn't even believe in Thor and the gods. He believes that you know he's he's his own man, his own making. And finally, they go far far enough south to where they see an Islamic church, and he's like. He walks in, he's like, wow, this is beautiful. And you're just like, what? This is the religion that you choose to to follow? But again, they, they in the show, they even exonerate it, you know? They show the most adherent followers praying and, you know, stopping combat to pray to the east or the west, whatever, whatever they do, get on their little prayer rep mats. So it's just silly. Again, but it goes to show you the disdain that they have for Christianity in the media and in Hollywood. So it's just, it's unbelievable. And staying on this subject about how we want to return to morality, Canada obviously doesn't. So in Canada, what they've done is, what they've done in Canada is they have, and they already did this a while back, but now they've done it for younger people. So, in Canada, they approved assisted suicide. So, cool. Congratulations. If you're an old person, you can be assisted assisted with suicide. The state will pay for it. State-funded suicide. Now, some people look at this like, oh, well, if people want to kill themselves, they should be allowed to do that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about state. The state is helping them and paying for it and encouraging it. One instance... That the most publicized instance was a para-Olympian, like a para-Olympian, a paralyzed Olympic athlete, was asked for the uh, state funding for, uh, she wanted to get a uh, a assisted, assisted stair, wheelchair, yeah. like, you know, one of those chairs you sit in that take you up and down stairs? It's an assisted chair like that. Lift, yeah, assisted uh, lift. Assisted lift, and the government wrote back, well, we don't really have that in the budget for you, but would you like to commit suicide? Like, they sent her a letter, and she, I mean, obviously she threw a fit. That's why it was in the media. She goes, I'm a Paralympian. I have a happy, good life. I just wanted to see if I could have government assistance with getting this thing paid for so I could get a a chairlift in my house. Mm. And they were like, no, 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 we can't do that, but we will help you if you want to end your life. Wild. Now they're doing it for young people. Young people that have nothing wrong with them, but are just having like a issue suffering with, with depression, or yep. they're they're directionless, purposeless. So, a girl who's twenty eight, she is not married. She lives with a forty year old partner who they have cats and they have a house together. But she just seems to be depressed and directionless, and she's scheduled to be put to death in May. Now, I've seen a couple of comments which I do agree with. I think it's it's kind of a a cry for attention, you know, she's going to have a bunch of friends and people come out and try to talk her out of it, which seems like something that, you know, a attention-seeking person would do. Because I I knew a bunch of people throughout life who suffered with mental health issues or loneliness and depression, and none of them actually, I feel like, would have taken the plunge. Now, that's this is just me speculating, but, you know, they would disappear and then they'd come back and they'd say... I was waiting for a car to run me over or something. You're just like, hmm. Suspicious. Yeah. So, not saying that, you know, your hearts didn't play out, but when when you watch them and you, you're with them and you, they do it multiple times and they they always come back, you're just like, I don't know if you actually have the conviction for it. And I have a life that I need to live as well, and I have schoolwork I have to get done, and I have... So, it makes you seem like... so. Everything they do, they put it on you. It's like, well, you're not that good of a friend if you're not going to come help me at the drop of a hat. It's like, I have a life as well that I'm trying to cultivate. I'm trying to acquire skills and go to college and get all this stuff done. And and a lot of it just seems like attention-seeking to me. Now, that's not everybody. There are some people who will actually pull the trigger on something like this. But a lot of it is, especially people who go public, it's a cry for attention. It's a cry for help. It's just a ploy. 
And that's what this could very well be. And I think I do agree with some of that sentiment. Everybody wants their 15 minutes now. However, here's what's weird about the situation is she has a 40 year old, she's 28. She has a 40 year old boyfriend. What kind of man is this? That's like, oh yeah, totally go for it. If you feel like you don't, I mean, how, how nihilistic of a society is Canada cultivated up there? It's like, if you're like, I can guarantee you if my girlfriend was talking about that, you know, we're not married yet, but if my girlfriend and she lived with me, we had a home together, lived together. And she was like, yeah, I just feel directionless, purposeless. I just, just, I just don't think I can go on. I think I'm going to sign up for government assisted suicide. Would you not like attempt to talk her out of it as her boyfriend? I mean, how crazy is this? I mean, maybe her, her mental state has worn on him or he's just like, I can't take it anymore. I'm just so fed up. You know, like, like I said, when you were listening to me, whenever I was dealing with friends in college who had these issues, or you're just like, they, they never actually do anything. They just say they're going to do something and you go and sit with them for 12 hours. And it's like, look, you need help. You need, I, I can't help you. I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm just someone who considers themselves your friend. But at this, at the end of the day, like, you're going to lose friends because of this mental state you're in. So if you think about that, it's like a friend can only be your friend if it's a beneficial relationship. Like if I'm just sitting there trying to talk you down off the ledge every time we hang out, it's going to be like this is not a mutual friendship. It's just me trying to breach out and be your savior and it's taxing and it's trying and it wears on you. So the best thing you can do is just be like, Hey, I'm going to drag you to a mental facility and this is where you're going to stay until you get your shit. Or, excuse me. You get your life figured out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause that's why I say like, there's tons of stuff in, in, co or in college where, you know, these people who would threaten this self harm, they would they I'm not very popular. And then all of a sudden all of the people who were popular would come around and be like, wow, you're not a very good friend because you're it's like, I'm because you'll tell people it's like, I'm done with it. I can't do it anymore. It's weighing on my nerves because I'm living on the edge with them the whole time. And then like the rest of the people come in, people who he considered more popular, people that he wanted to be closer with would come out and be like, don't worry, man, I'm here for you. And then again, they did it. They hung out with him one night and then uh, never again. Because all it is, it's a plea for attention. It's like, oh, now they accept me. They they like me. It's like, yeah, but they like you the way that a girl likes a puppy. They like you a way that, you know, people look at you like you're their little brother. Yeah, they don't. If someone's coming to take care of you, they're not your friend. They're just a caretaker. Yes. Or they're there to make themselves feel better. When you're around it all the time, it's like whenever you're around a, uh, a family member who, uh, is ill, you know, it's like, uh, when our, uh, grandparents passed away, is it sad? Yes. It's very sad, hard to deal with. However, when you're sitting there and you go to the cancer treatments with them and you're around them and you're like, and they decide I don't want to do chemo anymore. So you're just around them for the rest. It's not a shock when it ends. The people who are never there, the people who say that they love them the most, who are never around, never assisting in the the most important part, the stuff that you're, you know, the hard part, the cleaning up part, that they're soiling themselves because they're losing control of their bodily functions. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the part that you're there for and you're like, whenever they pass, they finally go away. It's not a surprise to you. You're like, they were suffering. They were hurting. I love them very much, but now they're at peace. Their pain is ended and they're at peace. And the other folks who claim, you know, that, oh, I love them so much and they were never around come in and they're wailing and bawling. And of course, it's for them. You know, it's they weren't around enough. They know they weren't around enough. It's it's maybe I could have done more and spent more time with them. They're like, yes, you could have. You could have been there when they were at their most vulnerable and not like, I can't deal with this. And, and then, like I said, that, that's why their fights break out at, like, families and funerals because one person makes it about them and says, I could have done more. And then the rest of us are, like, you know, 
we've been here. We've seen it. We saw the, the pain and suffering they went through. We were here suffering with them, cleaning up the mess. And they're like, you just, you, you guys are so unempathetic to this whole thing. How are you not? It's like, because it's about you. This is about you. Like, we were here. We grieved with them the whole time. So that's how that is when it, deal, when it comes to dealing with someone who's a self-harm friend. You know, it's, it's, it's really about attention seeking and it's about who's going to, who's going to come talk me down off this ledge. So I, I view it, don't get me wrong. I know people struggle with mental health and they struggle with depression, but Chad and myself view it in a very different way because we've been around people who threaten it left and right. So it's hard to know who's genuine about it and who's just looking for attention. Because you can be led around by bad faith actors who are literally just attention seekers. Yep. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with folks. You know, don't let people hold you hostage to their emotional and mental states. I mean, help them if you can. But like I said, again, you're not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a doctor. So I can only help you if you really and truly want to help yourself. And I'll take you to the place you need to go. Like, the only thing I can do is talk you off the ledge. I, I can't be there with you every step of the way, every minute of every day. Because I have a life too. Now, some people can go out and make their whole life that. But, you know, I, I, I became wise to the world in college when you, you know, had friends who had these issues. Mm-hmm. People that do deal with it are called psychiatrists, and they're borderline psychopaths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they themselves are borderline psychopaths. Yeah. Oh, I love dealing with people's problems. I love it. I love it. Uh, I mean, you have genuine ones like Jordan Peterson, who, you know, yeah. clinical psychiatrist who would help people actually work through their problems. But it's just interesting. Again, recapping what's going on. The Canada with the... Assisted suicide. They're all about it now. I mean, how godless is that society? How godless is the people... Oh, excuse me, how godless are the people up there that they are... Yeah, no, if you want to kill yourself, just go for it. I think it's great. But we're not far behind. This whole trans issue... Everyone's like, it's a mercy to tell kids to lop off body parts. It's a mercy to tell them that, yeah, you're not a, you're not a boy, you're a girl. You've never looked like a boy. You don't fit in. It's like, you know, this is why I, I know a lot of people criticize people say, God doesn't make mistakes, you know. But at the same time, it's like, he, you, you were made in the image of God. Regardless of how you feel about how comfortable you are in your skin. And again, that's why a godless society is a lost society. Because, I can, you, because if, if that's the case, you're your own God. I can be what I want to be, so I can be a girl, I can be a boy. Exactly. A I can society, be a dragon. A society without God can reason itself into anything. I can be a T-Rex. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can rationalize anything. Again, you can rationalize murder. You can rationalize adultery. You can rationalize stealing. That's why the left is so pro-communism and so pro-socialism. They can approve of stealing from other people because, well, I'm lazy and I don't want to do the work, and I feel like... Uh, we're being cheated. Well, of course you do. It's the easiest answer. It's the easiest solution. It, it requires the least amount of self-reflection. It's like, maybe I'm not working hard enough. Maybe I should invest some money into a business. I don't know. But that, again, it's, it's a godless society is a lost society. And there is no knowledge without first fear of God. Because again, it, we're seeing a lot of problems that, A, they don't have. I, I know that the Islamic countries have a lot of problems on their own. <laughs> but you don't see these particular style issues because they're just like, yeah, no, there's. In, in Africa too, in, in third world countries, you don't see gays. You don't see trans. You just see men and women doing men and women things. That's one of the things I remember somebody talking about was a society that's more equal or, you know, 
egalitarian egalitarian have more issues like this because in a society that's you know third world or poor is that you're fighting to survive so you don't have time to think about you know <laughs> these kind of issues yeah so a society that has no purpose no value yeah. and has everything that they've ever needed makes up problems yes they yeah. just make up their own problems yeah when you when you watch you can watch whatever tv show you want at any time of the day you can consume whatever youtube instagram all your social media content you can compare your life to other people and be like, wow, my life sucks compared to theirs. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt said this. Comparison is the great thief of joy. Now, you can compare yourself a little bit and be like, look, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to bust my butt. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to get better and better myself so I can emulate a similar style of success. But again, don't compare. It's like nobody's equal in this world. We all start in different places, but we can get... We can become as equal as we can by the amount of hard work and dedication we put into stuff. Yes. The computer programmer is not shouldn't compare himself to the you know, college or the, the college player. athlete, the NFL athlete, exactly. Because yeah. their measures of success are completely Very different. Very different. <laughs> Very different. So that's about all we got for you today. It's just been a a wild one. I'm sorry, I know we're sticking with the LGBTQ trans theme stuff, but it just seems to be the stuff that keeps being thrown out in our faces in the media left and right. And this assisted suicide stuff in Canada is absolutely bat, excuse me, bat shit crazy. And we're not far behind them. This trans stuff, lopping kids' body parts off, putting them on hormones, we're literally a step behind them. The next thing will be assisted suicide here in the United States. It's coming. Yes. And if you can rationalize your way into kids chopping off their body parts is okay, assisted suicide's like, it's right, no behind, right around the corner. Duh. But, I mean, we already have abortion, so, I mean, that kind of counts, too. I mean, we're already there. That's, that's evil at its finest. Yep. So, keep that in mind, everybody. Kind of a, a low, serious talking point today, but... I'll end on a semi-high note because I forgot to bring it up. But our OKC Thunder will be playing the 76ers tonight at... Let's see what time. 6.30 today. 6.30. So 6.30 against the 76ers. And if we beat them, we'll keep staying at the top of our mm -hmm. conference. So awesome, I'm excited awesome. for that. So we'll see if they can handle the 76ers. Fantastic. <laughs> And then they play the Celtics right after that. Oh, so boy. It's just nonstop for them. This is why mm -hmm. we start getting worse towards the end of the season because we just have all these players that are just going to go out because yeah. they don't have a big dip, a big bench. For yeah, hopefully the Thunder can stay away from the injury bug. That'll be uh, be crucial. And hopefully they have the bench help. You know, they're not the, as well-known of a team. We don't have the, the star power we used to have about 10 years ago. But. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good thing. We get a bunch of rookies that are really good. And play well together. And play well together. Mm -hmm. And that's what matters. But that's the problem is then we basically become a farm team for mm -hmm. the <laughs> yes for the guys that can afford yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But that's really all we got for today, unless you've got anything else. No, that's about it. That's I hope everyone has a wonderful day. This is the Twins with Owasso Live. This was the Morning Loop. God bless everyone. Drive safe out there. See you later, everybody.